Well, that worked. This video is brought to you by Aura. Howdy folks, welcome to another video here at Ordnance Lab. We have, well, one of the guys from DNS Creations. Unfortunately, Dan's grandmother passed away, so he couldn't make it, which is unfortunate. But you're here now to help us out with this stuff right here. We're gonna have some great times here with rockets. What are we gonna be doing? Uh, right now, we're gonna be doing some static and placed uh, warhead tests. We're gonna check the penetration of our warheads of our rockets. Penetration. Yeah, we love penetration. Penetration is very important with rockets. All right, well, we'll go check out the warhead and see what happens. All right, so what do we have here? So we've got a piece of uh, six inch A36 hot rolled steel. This is, in a, this is a stand in for our uh, tank since I hear Russian tanks are in short supply nowadays. So would this be similar to what you would actually find on like a main battle tank? Uh, it's actually somewhat similar compared to uh, what the Russians use. They use a cast steel alloy. This is gonna be a, a good compromise for a stand in on what we have available to us. And so what do we got else here? So here's our uh, standoff for our shape charge. This is going to simulate the standoff provided by a rocket that we're going to do feature later. Because like with an RPG, I know that um, the anti-tank ones will have a, the initiator, I believe, is in the front of it. There's a hollow space in the front mm -hmm. so that then it can actually explode because uh, you don't want the shape charge to go off right next to the armor. You want it to actually detonate with a little bit of standoff so that it can develop and then actually penetrate into the armor. That's correct, yeah. So we've got this right here for our standoff, and then what else do we have? So this one is a uh, copper liner and a uh, it's a composite liner. So we have plastic in the front, copper in the back, and we're gonna test this and compare it to four other uh, shape charge types that we prepared. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and test these right here. Again, this right here is our crawl, walk, run till we can actually, well, hopefully make a 3D printed legit anti-armor weapon. So our own little homemade javelins. So, That's well, right. let's make some bangs. Boom. You might remember Dan and Steve of DNS Creations. They joined up with us a few months back to help them complete their long-standing project, 3D printed explosive rockets. Two, one. We also tested out a prototype 3D printed shape charge that Steve designed and wanted to place in his rocket as a warhead. Both tests proved that the idea worked, but needed a bit of refinement to really get the concept of a 3D printed shape charge to perform correctly. So Steve returned to our explosive Never Never Land to test out a series of different shape charge ideas. We fabricated four shape charges for testing this time around. They will be housed in a rocket warhead hull, then positioned against a section of steel to test performance. Each warhead contains approximately 125 grams of high explosive. Now let's test Steve's prototype hybrid copper plastic shape charge concept. All right, well, you may notice we're wearing these cool new helmets that we got from Apex Armor Company. There'll be a link there for you to check them out. We wanna really very much thank them for providing those after all of our uh, body armor got nuked. So what we'll do now is, well, we'll see what happens. Fire the hole. Fire the hole. Fire the hole. All right, well, we had a great boom, but it looks like that we didn't exactly have, uh, as we like to say, very nice, great success. It was not great success. Although, well, actually, it looks like that there's a little bit of penetration here. If you look um, right there, this is this metal goo of stuff. Let's see if we can pick at it. Really not sure what that pink is there. Yeah, there's a pink substance right here that um, maybe we made ordnance slab Isium or whatever? Never mind. That was a poor attempt at a joke, sorry. Um, it got in there somewhat. Yeah, it did penetrate. I mean, Ivan and his tank crew would not be schwacked, but um, we would have probably gotten their attention. Ah, there we go. So we did get some penetration. You can see right here where it got eh, a quarter an inch, half an inch. Yeah, not too good. Yeah. Story of my life, not getting deep enough. All right, so we've got this reddish metal stuff that we're really not quite sure what it was. So we have somewhat of a, I mean, we technically have a success. It did go in there, 
And I'm assuming that would have been more than if we just set a charge on there oh, for sure. and set it off. So we have a little bit of penetration, but looks like we need to do a little bit of improvement on it. Two different spots there too. Yeah. So maybe it didn't lens well. There's a whole bunch of different things that could be. Yeah, we got three more to try. Yep, all right, let's try the next one. The metal plastic shape charge cone was a bust. So it's disqualified until further notice. We need to tweak it a bit. Next up is the Pyrex glass cone. This is predicted to perform well, as we have had great success with glass as a shape charge liner. But before we get to that, add time. Remember that one guy who advertised his social security number to prove how secure his identity was? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Ordnance Lab always recommends safeguarding your personal information. Advertising your personal info is not a good idea. A great idea is to sign up with our partner Aura. Aura is an all-in-one security service that provides everything you need to safeguard your data over the internet. Signing up with Aura will provide you with protection from financial fraud, identity theft, online security via VPNs with military-grade encryption, and even parental controls. By using the link aura.com slash ordinance, you can get a 14-day free trial of Aura and take advantage of their outstanding security services and 24-hour support. Now you no longer need to worry that your identity is getting compromised after digging through the dark web to purchase rocket launchers with an obscure cryptocurrency called PickleCoin. So head over to aura.com slash ordinance to start your 14 day free trial today. Link in the description. All right, fire in the, oh wait. Want to make sure that we again, thank Apex Armor or Apex Body Armor Company with two A's. Make sure to check them out for providing this stuff to protect our noggin. So now nice. we'll do the real fire in the hole. So we were just talking before, we were disappointed by the previous results where it only went in about that far or so. But this right, we were talking about possibly switching out the medium, but we stuck with it and it was a great idea to do that because we got a significant amount of penetration. Now, you know, some folks may look at like, oh, hey, you know, a 120 millimeter round from a M1 Abrams would have gone further, but this is an improvised thing that you made out of what, glass? Yeah, this was a Pyrex glass and a 3D printed munition. So this would be pretty bad on an APC or something. Yeah, so this right here, we're getting into, I, I we're not gonna call it an anti-tank weapon, but we're starting to get into armor. counter armor. Yeah, yeah light armor This weapon. would be legit to get through um, some lighter armor on vehicles. And yeah, so we've got another one and we'll start testing again. As predicted, the Pyrex cone performed exceptionally well. Its use is still tentative due to glass being fragile and not ideal for a rocket, but it worked really well, so we're not disqualifying it. Next up is what we've been waiting to test, the 3D printed copper cone. Copper is an ideal material for shaped charges, and this 3D printed concept opens up a whole new world of shaped charge ideas. All right, ready? All right, let's Part do it. Hole. That sounded pretty good. Yep. All right, well, I guess we could say never been done before, finally. Never for a, been done before. Yeah, 3D printed uh, copper penetrator like that that worked really well and got a lot of penetration, yeah. serious penetration. We were hoping for a result, and I'll tell you what, we got a result. This is printed on a humble Ender 3 printer, just a basic $99 Amazon printer with filament, uh, centric copper uh, material. I said that wrong. And we got some serious penetration. That outperformed real copper. Yeah, so wow, very good on that. And that's what you came up with on your own. That wasn't yeah. anything that we did. So you did a great job there. So we've got one more to test before we start losing our, or before we lose light. And so we'll do one more and call it a day. Yeah. The 3D printed copper cone performed far better than expected. Our last test is a machine formed copper cone, similar in concept to a commercially made shaped charge. The idea is to test this against the 3D printed cone as a predictable known standard. Click, click. Boom. Click, click. Click, click. All 
right, well, this we definitely saved the best for last. Great job on this. We got what, about three inches of penetration, we said? Oh yeah, this um, is. That's about the size I'm used to handling for three inches oh, or so. Oh yeah, same here, man. That's why we uh, play with explosives. Yeah, compensating for a lot of things. Let me see. Uh, it's gonna be a race to the finish between this yeah. and the printed copper, honestly. Oh, we, they were both good, but this whole. can't hole, find any Ordnance Lab Mark I sticks, but wait, here, this one's solid go. enough. There we go. So we've got, yeah. Yeah, and this thing is concentric and beautiful. This this would have messed up an APC. Yeah, this right here is messed again, up with an F. Yeah, yeah, messed up with a very big F. Uh, this right here again, we're not get. I don't think we're quite at any tank weapon. Well, maybe I guess no. a World War II tank or something. I'd say it's a light armor weapon. For yeah, sure. definitely a light anti armor weapon. Now, um, we have of course we have all the right licenses and registrations with all kinds of government agencies. But if you really want to flip out and check us out, you can make sure you can call the Houston FBI office or the McAllen Field Office with the ATF and waste their time. And they're going to tell you that, yes, we have all the right pieces of paper on the wall, but folks have done that before. So we'll just save them from like call, calling their local sheriff's Royal office Mounties. and being like, oh my God, they're bailed rockets on my internet. Anyways, all right, so what we're going to do now is we'll go ahead and cut out and we'll go in there and do some in-depth analysis of all this stuff with stuff better than the Ordnance Lab Mark I stick. And so we'll go cut out and do that now. All right, so first one on the chopping block, our first configuration for shape charge warhead on the rocket. This was what we call our composite shape charge liner. This consisted of a copper layer and a PLA printed layer. As you can see, um, not so good. We only got 14 millimeters of penetration with it and uh, it didn't look to uh, have lensed very well. In fact, there's a pretty erratic pattern about it. So that PLA uh, liner really interfered with our copper liner on this shape charge. All right, the second test that we had was our borosilicate glass, commonly known as Pyrex liner. This one achieved 20 millimeters of penetration. As you can see, we had good lensing and a pretty respectable depth, considering all of these charges only had 125 grams of explosives driving them. A very small warhead, we achieved really good penetration. Very respectable for the Pyrex glass. Our third test, this was a very close second place. It had amazing performance. This was actually uh, a 3D printed copper liner. This liner was printed on an Ender 3 using a copper filament that contained 90% copper. It was not debound, it was not centered, came straight off the printer, a $100 printer. This achieved 48 millimeters of penetration with 125 gram charge. Extremely exceptional performance and uh, really easy to make that liner. All right, and finally our winner. This is a press form copper cone. It achieved 58 millimeters of penetration. It was actually really close in the running to our fully printed copper cone. Um, honestly, with a small warhead and 58 millimeters penetration, it was exceptional. So we're really pleased. Well, hopefully that was an enjoyable video for y'all. That was really well done. What was your degree in? <laughs> aviation. In aviation. So there's all y'all engineers out there. He just kicked y'all's ass at uh, making shape charges. Someone at Raytheon hopefully has a bunch of four letter words that we're not able to use here on YouTube. But that was extremely impressive with, uh, I mean, it, we didn't mean it to, but we had a gradual escalation of the penetration. <laughs> penetration, sorry, Allie's running around doing autistic lab stuff. But we had an escalation of the penetration as we went along. And again, that was really impressive and very well done. Yeah, um, the first charge, honestly, my heart sank a little bit. And then as we progressed through the charges and got better and better and better, uh, man, I couldn't have been more tickled. They yeah. worked great. Legit ye of little faith, and it just kept going, and Allie keeps coming over here to be annoying. So, all right, well, hopefully this right here is the start of something, um, well, it is definitely the start of something good, but we're gonna be following this right here up with a actual video. We're gonna be turning those shaped charges into a warhead that we're gonna be putting on a rocket and trying to project that out about 100 meters or so. That's right. And then uh, at that point, we're gonna have a legit counter armor weapon. And I mean, that's pretty impressive, I think, with just a bunch of stuff that you got off of you know, Amazon and a bunch of 3D printers. Yeah, to my knowledge, I don't know of anybody else that's ever made a 3D printed anti-armor rocket. Yep, and so again, never been done before. Never been done before. All right, well, thanks for watching and we'll see y'all next time.